Good morning, Safari Mac fans, and welcome back to Safari Mac Explorers North America, and welcome to the Florida Panther Part 2. I am Safari Mac, your guide and host, helping you make connections to the wild. Now, before we continue on with the Florida Panther, I feel like I just may have gone a little, gone a little fast with my previous part, so I just wanted to kind of touch base with you all and show you a couple of special things about the human culture. So, the... If you remember the key, Mar the Marco key cat that I mentioned last week, this carving was actually discovered roughly back in 19, 1895 on Marco Island, which was able, which as you can see, really does resemble something like that of ancient Egyptian culture. I also wanted to mention this special kind of thing. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, and I quote, the half man, half beast key Marco cat stands as a striking testimony to the power of spiritual interplay among species. So I just wanted to make sure that we all kind of knew a little bit about that before we continue on today. So, and then once again, as mentioned, this is the, it is considered to be the state mammal of Florida, as well as there's even a ice, ice hockey team that um, named themselves the Florida Panthers after being reckoned after this animal was recognized as an endangered species, but we'll get more to that later. Let's talk about a couple of wild things. Now, this is a little shortened because today the threats and what we need to do went a little way more than the wild things. So, one of the wild things is that when they're hunting for prey, they are known to make a leap of nearly 14, 15 feet or four meters across. That's a pretty big leap for any, for any cat. And another very special thing about the Florida Panther, apart from being the state mammal, earlier this year, in 2023, this animal was featured on a United, on a United States Postal Service forever stamp as part of the endangered species set based on a photograph from Joel Sartor's photo arc. So if you're familiar with that, you know, then that's, to me, that's a pretty big honor to have this cat be recognized like that. If you're not sure of the photo arc, I'll be sure to leave you a link down in the description below, along with my email address. So for those that may have questions about animals or about today's animal, the Florida Panther, you can always just send me that. But now let's continue on. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you a fair warning as I've done in the past. This part might be a bit sad, but this is critical to understanding the plight of this cat. So today, now we're gonna talk about the threats that this animal faces today. So first of all, believe it or not, in the very early days of America, when the land itself was just beginning to establish itself and go beyond the original borders and explore the country, this cat was living not just Florida, but part of South Carolina, Southern Tennessee, and in states of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and even the state of Georgia. But unfortunately, people were fearful of these animals that these creatures were going to either kill them in their sleep or that they were gonna take all their livestock. So unfortunately, they were hunted and I do mean a lot. Finally, up until today, you only find them in the southern part of the state of Florida. More specifically, nothing more beyond than the Caloosahatchee River. Although some panthers have managed to make it across and go further up, but we'll get into more about that later. Unfortunately, as if that wasn't bad enough, they're still facing conflicts today from humankind. Ranchers are all, ranchers. Now we don't need to be putting blame on these people. They have a livelihood to make, make, and they've got an earning to keep. So, unfortunately, you know, panther panthers usually got to go first then to move away. They try to do everything to prevent an accident, but sometimes it can't always be avoided. Thankfully, though, we can, I can safely say that. The, there is no, no, there's never been an official record of a Florida panther attacking a human. And yet, unfortunately, they, they get, they're unexpectedly under attack, not just from the ranchers, but from Florida vehicles. Unfortunately, 
a number of Florida Panthers are killed every year on the road from either going through Old 41, which we call Tamiami Trail, or even I-75. I there still are some reportings of hits, of, and these their population continues to dwindle, and it is not looking good. Because of this low population at one point, back in the 60s and 70s, they were thought to be only like maybe 20 to 30 of these cats left. And unfortunately, we are seeing a little bit of a result from this unfore unforeseen consequence. If you've ever, inbreeding has taken, unfortunately, a huge toll on the species. There's a way that you can actually even tell if, an, if a cat is inbred. If sometimes you might see a little kink in their tail, or they may have a little bit of a cow-like, a lick, a cow lick that's found on their, near their rear ends. So like I said, at one point, these guys seem to be going, going, going. It seemed like they were going to be gone forever. However, help came a little sooner than expected. Help did come in the nick of time. And I really do mean in the nick of time. How we're going to how we saved them. First of all, if you recall from part 1, the Florida panther is just a subspecies of cougar or puma or mountain lion, whatever you want to call it, right? So, back in the 90s, a team brought in eight what eight cougars from Texas to be released into the Florida Everglades to boost the population. And as a result, since that happened, from less than 100 to now maybe 230 individuals left, they've, the species is making a bit of a comeback. But they still need a lot of help today. Even though that they're part of this specific, even though they're like just a subspecies of the cougar, puma, or mountain lion, they really are kind of their own unique animal, and they still need a lot of help from us. For one, here's one way that we're helping them. Some, bio, some conservation groups have actually come up with an idea to place livestock in a kind of cage at night to prevent Flor Florida panther attacks and conflicts. Another way of helping them is just simply slow down on the road. You don't need to be speeding. You can still get to your destination. You might be a little late, but if you slow down, you'll be saving a panther's life. And now a number of some pan and really one of the biggest problems that they should that we should be doing but is not being done right now is trying to re grab take a few from the southern part and reintroduce them to certain parts where they once used to roam. The problem with that with that is just unfortunately the people are still fearful of these animals that they will be that they will kill people or that they'll kill their pets or their livestock, we need to show them that this is not always the case. If we can find ways to help prevent these kind of accidents, then we really do have a chance at bringing these creatures back. I mean, all those states that I mentioned, I mean, that's a pretty big loss. If they were able to return to some of those places, then I think that would be a really great sign of success. In fact, unfortunately, one Florida panther all by itself was found all the way up in Georgia where unfortunately it was shot by a hunter where the hunter faced, it, faced jail time as well as was no longer able to hunt ever again. But the fact that it managed to get up there all by itself without human intervention, so swim, up the cl swim past the Closahatchee and go no further and further north, that's a pretty big step. The Florida panther is one of the state's most iconic of all animals, and it really is kind of that special symbol that Floridians love so much. But can we save it? I really do, I personally do believe that we can. It only starts, and it can only happen, when we decide to make a bigger change. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for our very first mammal in North America. Be sure to join me next week as we go face to face with Florida's top reptile, the alligator. But until then, as always, hit the like and subscribe button, check out my Facebook page for conservation messages, and send me an email if you have questions. But until next week, 
This is Safari Mac, and I'll see you out there in the land of the free and the home of the brave.